Hi, my name is Becca and I'm here on behalf of the Post Center for Health Education in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so in the midst of the COVID-19 epidemic, I know mental health has been on the forefront of many people's minds. And so we'll be going through some simple lessons on how to maximize your mental health during this situation and hopefully give you some practical things that you can do that will both benefit yourselves, your families, and your community. Did you know that your hand can be used as a model for the brain? It's true. This idea was first made by a man named Dr. Dan Siegel, and I'm going to explain it to you now. So for the hand model of the brain, the thumb goes inside, crossed over the palm of the hand, and then we close down with our top fingers. So in this model, our wrist represents the brain stem, which is shown in this picture. So the brain stem plays a really important part in the body. It helps relay messages between your brain and the rest of the body. Next, we're going to talk about the outer layer of the brain. So in our hand model, that's our fingers and our knuckles. So the outer part of the brain is called the cerebral cortex. And if you've seen a picture of this in a textbook or on the internet, it usually looks like a wrinkly puppy and it's probably gray. So the very front part of the cerebral cortex is called the prefrontal cortex. And you can see that in the picture next to me. Now the prefrontal cortex is really important for humans because it helps us think, it helps us solve problems, and also it helps us control our emotions. And so finally, we're going to talk about what's underneath my fingers. So if we lift up the fingers, there's my thumb, and I have a llama puppet on my thumb, and this part represents our amygdala, which you can also see in the picture next to me. So our amygdala plays a really important role in the brain. It almost acts as a security guard that is constantly surveying our situation to see if there's any danger. And if there is danger, it can help alert the body to jump into action to either fight that danger or run away. And the llama really is a good example to use for the amygdala because farmers have used llamas to help protect their animals from coyotes and wolves because they're always looking around for danger. Now, for humans, can be a really good thing. If there is a danger in the environment, we can jump into action. Say we're walking across the street and all of a sudden a car starts to turn. The amygdala alerts the body to get out of the way. But sometimes our amygdala goes off when we really don't want it to. So say, for instance, before you're taking a test, if your amygdala is going off and you're getting those big stress responses, it affects the way you think. Because what we call this is flipping your lid. So as soon as the amygdala goes off, our prefrontal cortex pops up and we can no longer use that prefrontal cortex to help us make decisions because our amygdala is doing the reacting for us. So if we're taking a test or before a situation where we really need our thinking ability and our decision making, we need to get that prefrontal cortex back online so we can calm down, calm down the amygdala and deal with that situation. So in the example with the test, if our amygdala is going off before the test, we have to use our skills, especially those good breathing skills, to help us calm down that amygdala and calm down our frontal lobe and be able to think more clearly. So notice times that your lid might be flipping and that prefrontal cortex is not engaging. And think about ways that you can help calm down that prefrontal cortex. Some of the easiest ways to do that would be breathing exercises, which we're going to try in a moment. Sometimes it helps to just take a break and take a walk and then come back into the situation with a clear head after you've done some physical exercises. Maybe you need to take a break and have a snack if you haven't eaten in a while, but those are all things that you can try to help calm down that prefrontal cortex to get ourselves back online and ready to deal with that situation. 
our body gives us really loud signals when we flip the lid and the amygdala alarm is going off and our prefrontal cortex has gone offline. So some of those biological signals might be a fast heart rate, maybe our breath has gotten quicker, uh, we might feel our body temperature going up, we might notice we're sweaty, um, some people have stomach issues, others also experience headaches. So these physical sin signals are really important to pay attention to because it's our body's way of telling us we need to calm down. So one of the simplest ways to do that are through breathing exercises. And what's great about breathing exercises is that they're free and that your breath is always with you. Let's try a breathing exercise together. Now this one is great for beginners. It's called equal part breath. It just means that your inhale and exhale match in length. Another reason I like this particular exercise is because it gives your brain something to do. So if you tend to have a chatty brain, sometimes I call it monkey brain, and it's hard to calm down, you're giving your brain a task to do, which is counting, and then hopefully if we can get our mind in control, we can work on slowing down the body. So let's sit tall. You can also do this standing. If you're seated, make sure that both feet are flat on the floor. That way you can sit up a bit taller and then relax your shoulders and keep a neutral spine. If you'd like, you're welcome to close the eyes. So we're gonna take a nice slow inhale. We're not going to suck at the breath and hold it, but rather take in a nice smooth inhale and then a nice smooth exhale. So I like to start out with a count of four, particularly if you're new to breathing exercises. So you're on your own count of four. We'll breathe in through the nose and then breathe out for four and then breathe in for four and then breathe out for four if you're comfortable with four, you can move to a five count inhale and then a five count exhale and again a five count inhale and then a five count exhale and if you're comfortable with five, you can move up to six so that's a six count inhale and then a six count exhale. And that's all there is to it. So if you're ever in a situation where you find that your lid has flipped, you can try the equal part breath. You can go for as long as you like. You can even move up to a seven or eight count breath. And however long it takes to get that frontal lobe, that prefrontal cortex back online and calm yourself down. We hope you enjoyed this mini lesson. The Post Center for Health Education now has online programs available. We've converted some of our most popular programs to an online format. We promise the same great content, same enthusiastic staff, and engaging activities, all that make the Poe experience so valuable, unique, and effective. To book a program, please visit our website or call us today.